What's going on guys? Welcome back to Low Country Fishing. If this is your first time clicking on, welcome to the channel. My name is Dan and in today's video you guys I am going to do a full in-depth walkthrough of my 2017 Mako Pro Skiff. Now if you are brand new to the channel you guys I have been fishing on this boat for almost three years now and I have been tearing up every inshore species I can get my hands on with this boat. It handles shallow water, it can handle the bays, it can even get out near shore off the beaches on calm weather days and target just about anything you can catch. Uh, but what I want to do today is I want to do a full in-depth walkthrough on this boat. I want to show you guys everything that I like about this boat. I'm going to talk about some of the things I wish I could change with this boat if I was Tracker Marine. And I'm going to just show you everything that I have put on this boat, different ways that I outrig it to fish different specific ways, uh, and just going to kind of I guess shed some light on the Mako Pro Skiff. It is a fantastic boat to fish off of. Uh, I absolutely love it. I'm absolutely torn with the idea of selling this thing, but as you guys have seen in my videos and like I made the announcement in my last one, it's time to sell it. It's time to move on as the channel continues to grow. So let's go ahead and get this camera gear spun around and let me start the walkthrough on my 2017 Mako Pro Skiff. All right, so let's talk about some of the key features that set this Mako Pro Skiff apart from a lot of other boats that are out here on the market. Uh, now, first things first, they call it the Mako Pro Skiff 16, but realistically, it's not a 16 foot boat. It's 15 foot 10 inches. Now, the extra two inches, honestly, you're probably not gonna, gonna feel when you're out on the water. But the nice thing about a 15 foot 10 inch boat is it doesn't throw you into that 16 foot class. So that means you don't have to have a US Coast Guard approved throwable. You pull out the manual, you'll see clearly that it says any vessels under 16 foot doesn't have to have a throwable. So right off the bat, you know you don't have to waste space on a uh, little seat cushion throwable for the Coast Guard. Uh, the other best thing about this boat is the draft, right? So this thing drafts in eight inches of water. I can tell you firsthand, I have had this boat in eight inches of water. I've had it in seven, I've had it in six. I know when this boat starts to rub the bottom and it is true. Mako hit, it, hit the nail on the head with eight inches draft. Now with an eight inch draft boat, you guys, you can get just about anywhere you need to go. You can get up on grass flats on these flood tides and kind of push and pull around a little bit. Um, you can get into these back creek systems when it gets very shallow. You can lock yourself into these small little holes in the backs of these uh, marsh systems and whatnot and sit in there with these redfish just like you guys see me doing these videos. This little Mako Pro Skiff does all that. It's small, it's nimble, it drafts really shallow, and it gets you into some of the most tightest peculiar places that you can put a boat to go chase these fish. And another really cool feature about this Mako that honestly sets it apart from the others is this inverted hull design. So what an inverted hull is, it's basically a giant W, right? So if you look at the bottom of this hole, it, it's not like your, your traditional V hole, which means it's gonna allow this boat to stabilize out a lot better. When you have two guys standing on one side of this boat, it doesn't rock, it doesn't tip, it do, you don't have to have the fear of someone getting thrown off or water coming in the boat from over the, uh, the side gunnels. It's stable, you guys, and for a 15 foot 10 inch skiff to have the stability that this one does, it's amazing. I absolutely love how stable this boat is. It's actually one of the big things that sold me on it when I stepped foot on it the very, very first day. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna cover this boat from the front all the way to the rear. I'm gonna cover everything that comes on the boat, uh, every, exactly how I have it set up. I'm gonna talk about some of the key features with the components as I kind of pass along. So we're just gonna systematically cover this boat uh, front to back. So starting right up here at the very front, uh, this thing receives a two inch ball. This is the Fulton uh, swing away hitch, which is, or the, the fold away tongue they call it, which is really nice. It allows you to pull that pin, pivot this arm out of the way, and now you can stow this thing in a garage. This thing uh, measures out exactly 19 and a half feet uh, of length in your garage space and seven and a half feet in width. And that's going off of the white, um, the white bumper poles in the very, very back that's your width measurement. So if you took those off, if you didn't need them for freshwater use applications or whatnot, uh, the very edge of your fender guides or your trailer uh, wheel fenders right here would actually be a little bit more. It might actually be seven foot true width. So it just kind of gives you some basic specs if you're looking to stuff this thing into a, a garage. It fits perfectly straight in on a traditional garage. Uh, in my last house, I did not have to cock the uh, boat to the side or angle it. 
I just basically pulled it straight in. I took the motor, I trimmed it down, and I, and I turned it, locked it out all the way to the, uh, to the left, and it was good. All right, so the next thing is this front casting platform. This platform is big, you guys. For, for a 16-foot skiff, it's a really good size. You can very easily have one angler throw on this side and another angler be thrown on this side and cover some serious amount of water. You guys have seen in my videos where I'm on one side and I have my other partner on the other side throwing offhand, and we are fishing a back creek system in perfect harmonious balance. Uh, and this, this, it's just crazy how much front casting platform space you have. Not to mention, if you're in a back creek system and you wanna take that cooler in the back, you have plenty of room to put that 65 core Orion up here on this front deck, stand on it, cast, fish, and be able to safely step off the cooler onto a deck space uh, without having to worry of stepping off way, way off to the back and falling and hurting yourself or whatnot. Just a big front casting platform and it's honestly a really good key selling feature of this boat. All right, so stepping off the front platform, you come down here and now you have storage space up underneath this platform. Now I decided to uh, purchase the uh, Mako Curtain. It's a really good idea, it's a really good option for any of you guys that have a Mako and you want to kind of dress the boat up a little bit, but realistically, you have a way to keep things up under that, um, that casting platform a little bit better. Underneath here, you guys, is an absolute ton of space. Uh, the, the curtain is really easy to operate. It just basically snaps all across the top, and down on the bottom, it has slides, and it slides out, and the curtain will completely pull out. All right, so here's what we have underneath this front compartment. As you guys can see, that is a very large space there. On the right hand side, it's enough space for me to fit two full size Marine 12 volt batteries. Those are the uh, 27 DCs. Those two batteries are brand new. They might be uh, three months old, two months old, something like that. Uh, not very old at all. And up underneath there a little bit more, there's a little bit more storage space under there. Up in the very, very front of this boat, up under this uh, casting platform is honestly where I keep my uh, my life jackets and all that stuff where I can shove it out of the way and then under here is just extra space to put whatever you want. Now the way I outrigged this boat is I took a milk crate and I put my anchor in that uh, milk crate and I've put that milk crate right here on this left hand side and that kind of keeps me uh, good with the US Coast Guard and what they need you know with putting an anchor on your boat or whatnot. So there's tons of space to uh, fit stuff up underneath this boat. You have to remember though at the same time, it's not a giant boat. You can't bring a lot of gear, um, but you can put a lot of gear on here. And I'll talk about that when I talk about, uh, when I start covering the, uh, how to rig it up for the sandbars or beach saves with the family and stuff like that. But just know under that front platform and the, under that, behind that curtain, there's tons of space. All right, so I've done a, a few little different additions to the floorboard and the side, inside side gunnels of this boat. Uh, just to make it, I guess, better equipped and ju just more customized for me. Uh, so one of the problems that Mako has with this boat is this portion right here. So you have a lot of really good uh, knurling here, the anti-slip or the anti or the, the gripping that's uh, put into the bottom of the boat. And there was none here. This was a very slick surface. So what I've done is I, I just went out and I bought 3M uh, adhesive tape, basically the stuff you would stick down on your steps. And I put it there because I was falling, you guys. I would step off of this front top platform, step down here. If my foot was uh, any bit wet, it would slide immediately, and it was just a safety hazard. So I put this stuff down, and I've had no issues ever since. Uh, it's very, very grippy. Uh, it gets a little hot in the summertime, so you have to be careful when you step down. You want to step down and step off because it will get your foot a little bit hot. But that's honestly a really good thing safety-wise that uh, Mako should have done or Tracker Marine should have done differently with this boat. Now on the inside side gunnels, on the left side and over here on the right side, I have these stakeout poles. Now I, the reason I have two is because I used to have the 16 foot system uh, and, and I'll, actually if you're interested in that video, I'll link it in the card up above, above here. But I used to take a, uh, two of these uh, eight foot, nine foot poles, link them together and give me a 16 foot stakeout pole. Um, but I don't use that system anymore because I've kind of gone on to something different and I'll talk about that in the back. But for now, I have these poles still mounted on the side. I have one over here on this side. This is a nine foot stakeout pole that I use for the power pole micro pin in the back. And over here on this side is just a spare because there's sometimes when you're out fishing and you want to be able to anchor the back of the boat and as well as anchor the front of the boat and keep it from swinging, right? So just picture you're in a back creek system. You're in an area where redfish are. There's a nice piece of oyster structure that you want to fish. 
but you don't want the boat to swing out into it and spook whatever fish are right there. Or you don't want the boat to swing into the oyster beds and you need a secondary option or secondary way to pin the boat in place and not move. Well, that's exactly why I have these things and they are also coming on the boat. Uh, now I just got basic uh, uh, mounts for them here. These are just uh, three quarter inch uh, mounts that you can get just about anywhere. Um, but these poles here are both, I believe this one on the right here is eight to eight and a half feet. And this one right here is definitely a nine footer. And I'll talk about that when I start talking about the power pole option um, or the micro option. But it is a uh, three quarter inch solid fiberglass rod. It's not hollow, it's solid. All right, so let's start talking about the center console on the Mako Pro Skiff. Now right here up front, underneath this front jump seat, is an eight gallon live well. Uh, this thing is honestly, it's the perfect size for holding shrimp for a good inshore trip. It'll hold a couple quarts of shrimp and keep them alive easily. You can keep your mullet in here, your mud minnows, whatever you want to put. This eight gallons is honestly good enough. If you are going uh, to fish with pilchards, you guys need to be very careful not to overload this thing. I've noticed uh, probably about 15 to 20 pilchards at the absolute most is all you want to put in here because they will die off quick because pilchards or uh, pogies just basically need more space. But what we have inside the live well of this thing is the uh, Pro Air system. Now I have the, the double bubbler system. So I have a bubbler here and a bubbler here. And the control switch is on the other side. I'll show you guys that in a second. Uh, this is your, uh, your fill here. So basically you just crack this open and flip the switch on the console and the water will fill. And what it'll do is it will recirculate fresh water in and it'll circulate the old uh, nasty water out right here. So it'll basically allow the water to come up to, uh, to, to this level right here. One of the things you have to do though, is when you are running this boat, you have to tighten this thing down. I don't know if it's just a, just a defect with my boat or the other Makos, but if you don't tighten this down, as you run, it will continue to fill, it will overflow and your feet will get wet and all the stuff that's in here will get all over the uh, bottom of your, your uh, boat. So uh, just make sure you guys tighten this thing down, down here on the bottom. It's just a standard, uh, standard drain plug. Works perfect, no issues with it. Uh, the seat operates by just closing it and then you have to push it back and it steps into place. They, they do that so it'll actually clear the cushion seat right here. If not, you try to open it, it would hit. So you have to push forward first and then open her straight up. All right, so rod storage. This boat has uh, storage for five rods. You got four on the left side and you got one on the side here. Now what I like to do is I've taken just uh, a PVC pipe here and slid it and notched it right here into place. And what that does, that just kind of keeps my rods more secure. Uh, these rod holder, holders here that come factory equipped are a little big and the rods just kind of bang around a little too much. So I put these in place here and it keeps them still and it doesn't damage my cork handles because my rods are those Falcon uh, Coastal Lakes G's and they still put the, uh, the, the, uh, the cork material in them. Uh, up front here is your horn, works great. The navigation lights on this uh, on the boat is on the console on the left on the right they work great everything on this boat honestly works fine uh, you do get a custom uh, low country fishing sticker this is the one that i sell on my website if you guys are interested lowcountryfishingllc.com these things are uh, about five bucks a piece they're beautiful nice and shiny uh, so make sure you guys pick yourself up one of those uh, let's start up top with the brains of the whole boat and this is the Garmin Echo Map Plus seven inch screen with side view. Uh, this thing is a great, great tool. I love it. It's got the G3 uh, blue chip, so it's got the Navionics chip in it already. Um, this was a really good addition that came, uh, that I put on the boat. When I bought the boat originally, it just had a very small, I think it was a hook three or five, very small one. I upgraded to this and man, it's, it's nice. The side view on this works really great. Uh, the bottom view, it, it all looks, it, it looks good. If you're used to working with Garmin or Navionics, you're going to enjoy the features that come on this uh, seven side view. Uh, moving on down, this is the, uh, this is kind of where I keep my little jig heads. You guys see me kind of talk about in my videos. This is a groove fishing product. This is their little, um, I forgot the name of it, to be honest. It just holds all your jig heads. It allows you to stick your jig heads into each slot or your hooks into each of these slots and it makes it nice and efficient where you can just grab a jig head on the go, you get broke off, your leader's still good, grab one of the, these guys, tie it on, boom, you're back out fishing. You're not digging through your tackle box, wasting time. Uh, cup holder up here is just a standard size, nothing fancy about it. Um, the power pole 
remote or sorry the, uh, the the remote switch for the power pole micro is here you also get one uh, a lanyard one that comes uh, a part of the boat so that's the lanyard that you can clip on here is the trolling motor remote to the uh, Minn Kota with the iPilot says it there on the top uh, very very simple single uh, gauge on this boat it's just your tack that's it you don't have an hour counter on the dash uh, temperature sensor none of that the boat motor will actually tell you uh, with a uh, beeping warning if the temperature gets a little too hot as well as I have an hour counter on the back of the boat and you guys can take a look at that when we push to the back of the boat down here on the bottom is just very simple switches there's nothing fancy about any of this just a basic power switch your nav lights uh, work, the, uh, the nav size we talked about. The anchor lights are kind of cool. I put in some blue lights to go all the way around the base of the center console. So if you're anchored down fishing at night, you flip the anchor light on, you have blue lights down here. And it also powers that switch or that uh, receptacle right back here that extends up and allows you to use your, uh, your anchor light. And that anchor uh, light is actually up underneath the console there. I think you guys saw it when I showed that portion. Right here is the Pro Air system switch on off, basic, simple. It's the TH Marine Supply Company. This Pro Air system is worth it. If you guys have been on the fence or thinking about putting it in your boat, definitely put it on your boat. It's worth the money. It bubbles, it throws so much air in these uh, live wells, it really keeps your fish alive. Uh, you got a simple build switch, uh, your aerator. Now, this is where you have your fresh water that flushes into the, uh, center, the, uh, the cooler or the live well under this front jump seat. You can set it on auto and what it'll do is I believe every like five minutes it'll regenerate fresh water in there for a couple minutes or you can just turn it on manual and it'll re regenerate. So if you're wanting to just fill this thing up, you just basically flip it to manual, open that, uh, that valve like I showed you and it will fill up that live well nice and easy. You don't have to worry about taking a bucket, scooping and filling it into your live well or anything like that. You have the switch right here. The horn works and the USB plug works. You have a uh, 2.4 plug on top and down here on the bottom is a 3.0 so you can charge a little bit more uh, or a little bit faster your throttle controls right here on the side work great uh, have no issues with that the tilt trim on this motor works works really well as well and up underneath here in the center console is a uh, curtain so I also sprung for the rear curtain to match the front curtain just because it dresses it up but what it also does is it keeps your things in here right so if you fill this up with gear or whatever and you hit the gas and you take off, uh, you don't have to worry about your stuff kind of falling out back towards you. This curtain, even though it's just, it just attaches with just these little uh, snaps, it keeps all your stuff in here perfectly fine. All right, so the sun's really bright, so I'm hoping you guys can see that, but it's just a basic standard compartment under there. There's nothing special. That's where kind of all your electrical and your plumbing come in together. Uh, there's room in there to put you know, your dry bags, your wet weather gear, your foul weather gear. Anything you want to put in here, you can. You can throw a life vest in here. It's got room for all that. And the fire extinguisher in the back does come with the boat. All right, so moving to the back of the boat now, uh, we have the, uh, the cooler, which doubles as the seat of the boat. Uh, it's an Orion 65 quart cooler. It's a really nice one. This is actually the cooler that come off of a 2019 Mako Pro Skiff. Uh, a buddy of mine, he upgraded all of his coolers and everything to uh, Arctic stuff and he uh, was nice enough to give me that. So Mr. Vince, if you're watching this video, brother, thank you so much for the cooler. Uh, but this thing is nice. The cooler that comes with these Makos is an 85 quart cooler. And honestly, you guys, it's just way too big. The 65 is the perfect size. It gives you plenty of room to store stuff in here, whether you're keeping it as a dry box like I do, or you wanna use it to uh, store your ice, your fish, your whatever. Um, and it also gives you room to pass by on the sides. With the 85 that comes with it, it does get a little bit tight when you're trying to pass from the middle of the midship to the back of the boat. Um, so the 65 honestly works out better in my opinion. All right, so behind the cooler are your two fuel tanks, two individual six gallon fuel tanks, as well as another 12 volt marine cranking battery. Uh, that battery under there is not very old as well. I don't even think it's a year old to tell you the truth. Um, but what I've done is I've taken these two individual six gallon gas tanks and I have put a bypass valve or a selector valve in place and now it allows you right there see that valve with a brass handle it allows you to be able to select uh, either left side tank or right side tank so it gives you the option to do that kind of quicker and, and on the fly 
because the way I had it set up before, it was just two individual tanks and two of those little uh, speed kind of clip connectors. And if you're out there running and you run out of gas, the last thing you want to do is have to reach back there and fool with fuel lines and clip one out and clip it in. Then you have the worry of, man, I don't want this thing to break because things get brittle, with especially dealing with fuel lines and stuff. If you get out there and you, and you jam it or you break it accidentally, now you're out of gas. Now you're kind of in a weird predicament of having to call somebody or, or call CETO. So honestly, that's why I put that selector valve in there. I can select left, I can select right, and it's a lot easier and you can just honestly do it on the fly. Now what I do is every time I come back from a trip in my boat, whatever fuel tank I'm running off of, I go ahead and top that fuel tank back off and then I select the other, uh, the other tank. So I'm constantly using fuel off of both sides and I'm always keeping my tanks uh, nice, and, nice and full that way. If I want to get out and I want to go fish early in the morning, I don't have to worry about filling my, uh, my boat up on the way to the ramp. I can just get up, drive straight there, and not have to worry about anything else. All right, so the rear deck. The rear deck is honestly a good size. It's not the biggest, but it still allows you to fish off the back. Um, I have anchored down in place and stood up here and fishing and fought fish on this side as well as that side, even though all your cable management comes in on that side you still have room to stand and fight fish. Now, it's not a dance floor. You're not going to get up here and uh, try out all the newest TikTok dance moves, but it still gives you uh, room to stand up here and fish from an elevated platform. Now, I have went ahead and put in these uh, Scotty adapter mounts. What this does is this allows me to slide in my Scotty rod holders, and it gives me the ability to now troll off the back of the boat without worrying of putting the, line, the uh, rods here and the lines dangling or passing beside my head as I drive the boat. Everything now works off the back of the boat. So you can use it to troll, you can use it to uh, just set a couple rods in place and uh, soak some live bait or whatever you like to do. Uh, but I did it because it just, it needed, this is what this boat needed. It needed to come with an option to have some sort of rod storage or rod setup in the very back of the boat. So these things are actually really nice. Any of this Scotty product, you guys, uh, if you've been looking into it or researching it, Scotty makes really good stuff. Uh, and the rod holders that I have are also Scotty as well. And they're actually right here in my, uh, in my cooler. Like I said, I, I use my cooler as my dry box. So these are actually the locking ones. You can lock them and unlock them. So you just basically slide it into those little teeth here on the side, lock it in place. And now these things aren't going anywhere. You can adjust the angle right here with this little knob, whether you want to go up, back, left, or right, um, or if you want to cock them out to the side and just get that rod tip bent out a little bit more. If you're trolling, the way you can kick a couple baits, one bait out a little more this way, the other side, drift one out a little further back, and then if you want to drift one here, you can drift two in the back, and you can still fish with, uh, with four rods. Uh, just It can get a little bit messy because the boat's only, I think, five to five and a half foot wide, so uh, just kind of is what it is. But these Scotties, uh, honestly, they give you the option to kind of do various things. And they have all kinds of different mounts and adapters that you can tie into this to do all kinds of cool stuff. All right, so let's talk about the motor that's on this boat. This is a 2016 Mercury 40 four-stroke. The boat's a 2017, the motor's a 2016. It is what it is. When you buy uh, these boats already pre-made already, uh, pre up like this, Sometimes the motors were made before the boats were. They sit in the warehouse for a couple months, a year ticks over, and now you have a motor that's showing one year older than the boat when realistically it just could be a couple months. But the motor that comes on this boat is great, you guys. It's super economical on gas savings. Uh, with these fuel tanks that are in the back here, I can run one six gallon gas tank and it covers me about 40 miles of use. Uh, so you can imagine 12 gallons of gas, you can run this thing all weekend easy with no problem without having to worry about uh, refueling it. Uh, now, the motor itself is in great working order. I have no issues going on with it. The steering works great, the trim works great. The hydraulic fluid down on the bottom is the color it's supposed to be. It is not milky, I have no seal issues. Uh, the 300 hour service was done on this boat about nine to 10 months ago. Uh, so it is gonna come due on the 400 hour service, which is not a big deal. It's just a simple filter change and fluid change. Uh, which any of you guys can honestly do that. This is a very, very easy motor to work on, uh, so you won't have any issues with that. Now, the lower unit has seen uh, some bumps and bangs along the way. You guys know I fish in oyster beds. It kind of is what it is. I have a few scratches. I have a little chip down here, and that's, it, that's no big deal. It doesn't affect performance. doesn't do anything. I just honestly 
every couple months I throw some black spray paint on this just to make it look pretty again but you realistically don't even have to do that now I have touched up uh, some of the components here with uh, black spray paint um, every few months or so I start to get a little bit of rust and corrosion around some some specific areas but I just hit that with sandpaper uh, it stops the corrosion. I seal it back in with Rust-Oleum black uh, paint and I'm good to go and it holds back up for another few months. Uh, it, it, it is what it is, you guys. It's, it's the salt water game. You're going to constantly fight corrosion uh, with these boats. You just have to stay on top of the maintenance and that's exactly what I have. Now what I do want to do here is I want to pop the top of this cowling. I want to show you the inside of the motor. I want to show you the hour reading and give you guys an idea of what it looks like inside and uh, you'll be surprised how nice this thing looks, to be honest. All right, so I got the cowling off the motor. Uh, the cowling works great. There's no issues with it. It's in great working order. I've actually compounded it, sealed it, and waxed it as well. Same with the motor. So this motor and cowling both are looking like a brand new unit. Um, I have taken off the extra pin striping that come on the motor, uh, as well as the 40 that's on the on the back. Uh, I just I like the idea of simple. You guys, I don't like to overcrowd too many things with all these decals and stuff like that. Uh, so I just wanted a black motor with gray lettering. I kind of like how I did down the side of the boat. I, take off, I took off the strip that says Pro Skiff 16, all that. So it's just simple. It says Mako, and that's all I care about. Um, now the motor has 358 hours on it. Here's the Sierra counter. This thing was installed the day the, mo the boat was uh, purchased. I have all the purchase paperwork from the previous owner that owned it. Um, I am the second owner of the boat and uh, he, he basically had everything done at Bass Pro. He took care of the boat just the same way that I take care of the boat. But as you'll take a look at this motor, you guys, I have not put any WD-40 wax or uh, anything to make this thing shine. I just basically took the cover off and you're seeing it just the way you're gonna see it here live in person. Um, but everything works great. There's no rust, there's no corrosion, there's no cracking. All the seals work good, the electrical connections work good. I uh, don't have any codes that are thrown on this motor. There's no cracking on the flywheel or any of the other plastic components. I don't have anything leaking. <laughs> There's no fluid anywhere in here. It's just a good motor, you guys. It's th these 40, 50s, and 60s are good motors. They're great fuel efficient motors. They're not the fastest thing in the world, but you know what? They get you to where you want to go to catch the fish. And you know, if you got to go a little bit slower, then take in the scenery and enjoy the drive. But what I do want to cover real quick is the only issue that I have had with the motor. So I got back from one of my trips fishing. I'm washing the boat down like I normally do. And as I'm washing the motor, I noticed there's a small pinhole on the side of the cowling. Now I didn't really know what it was from. It honestly it looked like a bullet hole. I knew I drew through Savannah. So I'm thinking, did someone shoot my boat? <laughs> uh, no, no one shot my boat. It was actually a small pinhole that developed in the seal of where the top of the motor meets the bottom in that little cast section. Uh, for some reason, that little seal went bad in that one tiny little spot. And since it's on the, the uh, exhaust side of the motor, it's got the heat, it's got the compression, and it finally pushed a hole through. And it basically just blew, it just kind of torched a little hole through that section and through the cowling. Now the cowling's been fixed and repaired, it looks great. Uh, but in the meantime, while I was trying to figure out how this happened, I called Robert Hale down at Hale Marine uh, because they are the certified Mercury Mechanics uh, warranty and sales for the Savannah area. So I called Robert, chit-chatted with him. I told him what was going on. He said he's seen it happen, you know, just a few times in his career. Uh, kind of explained what was going on or what could possibly have been going on. And he said, yeah, we can fix it. So I brought it in and I brought it into him and him and his brother, Tim, they took care of me. They got this thing fixed up. Uh, I don't feel like I was overcharged for anything. We got it working great. And I've had no issues with the motor since then. So honestly, you guys, if you're looking for a good certified mechanic to work on your, Mer your uh, Mercury's and your Yamaha's, give Robert and Tim a, a, a shout down at Hell Marine in Savannah. Um, I'll put their information in the description of this video below, but it's a great place to, uh, to go and take your boat and don't worry about anyone ripping you off or, or doing you dirty. They're, they're great guys, they're actually brothers, and they will definitely take care of you. So I just want to take a quick second and I want to talk about kind of the things that uh, happened to me with this motor and let's keep going with the walkthrough. All right, so let's talk about the anchoring system on this boat. Now, this is something that I have just put on brand new. I've only used it about three or four times, and I can tell you I love it. This is something you guys definitely want to put on your boat if you're on the fence, especially if you have a small skiff. Now, this is the Power Pole Micro Anchor. This is the brand new generation. This is the newest one they have. As you guys can tell, the buttons are, re are, uh, are standing out a little bit. Um, the whole thing is waterproofed. They're not having any of the issues with the uh, board underneath here. 
corroding out like they were on the older models. And uh, honestly, you guys, I was waiting for my uh, power pole to fix that issue before I get one. And as soon as they did and the reviews started coming out that it's good, they're not having any issues, I jumped on it and put one of them on the boat. Uh, the power supply just basically ran right through here along with everything else. You just pop this cap off, you plug it in, and that's it. You're done. You're ready to go. This thing is running off of the 12-volt uh, the cranking battery right down here, so you have plenty of power. Um, the only weird, wonky thing about this, and uh, it's just one of those things, is whoever was making these at PowerPole, uh, they both put the buttons in the down orientation. So <laughs> this is realistically up and this is down. I don't know why I called PowerPole and let them know, hey, this is what's going on. They said, okay, send the unit back to us and we'll, we'll send you another one. I'm not worried about it that much, so I just decided to keep it. But you know, just know that if this is the boat that, that you guys wind up getting uh, from me, that <laughs> down is up and over here, down is down. All right, so let's talk real briefly about the uh, power pole anchor pin system that I decided to go with that's different than what you buy on power pole's website. So when you buy these things, you go on power pole's website and you have the option, honestly, to pick two different style pins. One's a hollow pin and the other is a solid pin. I think they call one heavy duty and one light duty or something like that. But the only issue I had with it is it only comes in an eight and a half foot length. Now, eight and a half foot may seem like um, a good depth to, uh, to be able to use with a stick pin. You may think, well, I'm not even an eight and a half feet, so why do I need even that? Well, what you have to remember is from the top of the pole or the pin is a T handle. Then you have all the material that has to pass through the machine as well as the material that has to pass from the bottom of the sh machine to the bottom of your boat. Now you've just lost almost three feet of pole that you just you just can't use, right? So realistically an eight and a half pole is only going to let you stick down in about five feet of water. Now you also have to take into consideration the type of material or the type of bottom that you are sitting on, whether it be mud. If it's mud, sometimes you need another six to 12 inches to push into the mud to get a nice stick. Uh, so taking in all those types of considerations, I decided to go with the Stick It pin that Bass Pro sells. Now it's only six inches longer. Six inches isn't a giant deal, but when you're in these back creek systems and you're on the fish, you wanna make sure you have enough pole to push that button, it sticks down, you don't have to worry about the boat continuing to slide into the fish, then you can just focus on fishing and not anchoring your boat. So that's kind of why I decided to go with that. Now, realistically, you can use any pin of any length you want. It just has to be three quarter inch diameter. Uh, I think Fastenal and Granger sells 10 foot poles if you want. Then all you gotta do is just fashion up some sort of a handle and there you go. You have another foot of anchoring depth to use if you need to. Power pole doesn't care, or the micro pin doesn't care the length of the anchor. It just knows that you push the button, it goes up, you push the button, it goes down and it sets like uh, kind of a strength on how hard to continue to drive that, that's it. So the length honestly is up to you. You just have to outsource a different rod to get for your unit. All right, so now I wanna take just a couple minutes and show you guys the different types of setups that you can do with this boat. Uh, the boat is, uh, it, it's, it's good at doing a lot of things honestly, and I, I do wanna show you that. So as I mentioned before, if you're just in the Back Creek systems fishing, you can set this boat up exactly like you see it here and you don't have to change a thing. Just go ahead and preload that power pole micro in the back, have it in there locked in, ready to go. That way when you get on the fish, all you have to do is click that remote twice, bang, it anchors down and you're not moving anywhere. Um, and you can continue to fish two guys off the front. When this trolling motor is deployed down, it gives you more space up here on the front bow. You don't have to worry about it being in your way. And honestly, it's the perfect length to where even when it's set very shallow, you're not having to cast over the trolling motor. It's at the perfect height where it's just a little bit below your waist and it's honestly out of the way. Uh, if you guys remember the Savannah Jetty picture or the Savannah Jetty video I did, I had my cooler that normally stays in the back up here on the front platform. You guys, when you move that cooler up here to the front, you have a serious amount of space in the back back here. I mean, you could literally have your dance party I talked about earlier. You can have your TikTok dance party back here. And uh, it, it's great because you have a lot of move. You have a lot of room to move around. You have a lot of room to fight the fish and whatnot. Then when you get your big fish on the boat, you have space. You have space to tag it like you guys see I do, measure the fish, de-hook it. You have room to safely work and that cooler is out of the way. You don't have to take it off the boat. All you have to do is move it up here to the front because as you guys know, when you're anchored down, the majority of the fighting is gonna happen right here off the back. 
So it just allows you a little bit more space. All right, and last but not least is the Bimini top. Man, this Bimini top is in great condition. Uh, it almost fully covers the center of the boat, which is great because if you want to put this thing up on a day when you're out fishing and it's hot and there's not a lot of breeze, it allows you to fish off the front, fish off the back, and the top does not get in the way. Not to mention, I'm six foot one, and if I stand upright, uh, my head just barely scrubs. So it is nice and tall, it stays out of the way, and it, it, it gives you guys some really, really nice shade. It's, it's honestly a really, really great feature. Whenever I normally would take the family to the sandbar, to the beach for the day, I would attach the, uh, the bimini onto the boat, just basically a one screw on this side, on that uh, little uh, accessory port there, and the same on the other side and we would deploy this thing. Now, I wouldn't drive with it up because uh, it's just a couple straps holding it, so it, it, it acts like a parachute, and I'm afraid it's just gonna rip off and damage something, but once we get to where we're going, uh, I deploy this thing, I open it up, and it creates a lot of good shade. Now, I have little kids, and as you guys know, the little kids, they do uh, tend to get hot easy, so having this little bit of shade right here is perfect. There's been days where we've just taken some towels and made like a little bed for them down there on the floor, and they just, you know, they nap, do their thing. It's the cutest thing in the world that you could ever see, but it just gives them a way to kind of get out of the sun and cool down. So you guys, this, uh, this Bimini shade is really, really nice. I love it, and it does come with the boat as well. So that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Um, this is the Mako walkthrough. This is a great boat. I'm glad that I got a chance to uh, fish on it, film on it. I grew my channel to the point of where it is on this boat and uh, I am happy to pass this thing on to the next owner. The boat works great, fantastic. I have zero issues with the boat. Uh, it's just one of those things where it's time to sell the boat. I need to move on to a bigger boat so I can continue to grow the channel and do more things, and that's it. So if you are looking for Mako Pro Skiff 16, this is the one for you. It is for sale. It will be on Facebook Marketplace uh, in the Savannah region. Uh, so just look for it there. I have a feeling it's not going to last long. I am going to throw the boat up for sale the day this video drops. So if you are interested, reach out to me on the Facebook Messenger uh, and we will uh, we'll talk from there. But the purchase price for this boat is going to be $15,000 and that number is absolutely firm. Uh, that is a fair price. I've been, I've been pricing these things out all over the, uh, the southeast coast and people are asking about 15 grand. They don't have hardly anything on it. So you guys, for 15 grand, you're getting everything you see on this boat. So if you feel like that's a value to you and you feel like you see yourself fishing in this boat in the, in the future, reach out to me and let's have a conversation. So that's it, you guys. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If uh, you haven't got a chance to subscribe to the channel yet and you enjoy seeing videos like this or any other videos that I do, uh, make sure you click on that subscribe button and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Take care. God bless.